What's going on guys, it's your boy Siobhan here, back with a new video, and today I think I found the best budget lightweight gaming mouse, and it's right here, the MSI GM41. I've been using it for the past 3-4 weeks, let's see what I think about this mouse, roll the intro. Alright, so I know finding an affordable gaming mouse can be a bit challenging, especially because when you go into that, like the budget range, the budget territory, there's just a lot of downsides in terms of the build quality, poor software, if any. And MSI reached out to me to check out their new mouse, and it caught my attention because of the weight. So this mouse only comes at 65 grams with a price of $54 US and that's enticing. I've been using it for the past couple weeks as I said before and coming from the G Pro X Superlight and the Razer Viper Ultimate, I can tell you that MSI did a great job with this mouse. Firstly, I wanna start off by saying how much I love this design. It's not screaming gamer and it looks very sleek. I'm also impressed that MSI managed to get the weight down to 65 grams without having a honeycomb shell. I personally hate mice with the holes in them. It feels uncomfortable and it tends to look nasty over time and also the only RGB light you can see is where the MSI logo is and you could control it and change up all the different effects with the MSI Dragon Center software or turn it off completely so the Dragon Center software offers fewer customization options than most of its competitors you can remap the left and the right buttons the thumb buttons and the scroll wheel click of the GM421 but the interface to do so it's kind of limited without recording custom macros, the only mappable function available to you are the mouse buttons, a few different multimedia functions, and DPI switching. So beyond the button mapping, there are a few configuration options available. You can adjust the polling rate of the mouse, which is the optical sensor, up to a maximum of 1000 Hz polling rate. You could toggle the optical sensor's lift off distance between low and high, which affects when the sensor starts and stops tracking movement once you've lifted the mouse off the mouse pad. There's also support for angle snapping, which smooths out the track when you're attempting to move the mouse in a straight line which is kind of cool from a budget mouse lastly there are the DPI tiers you have five tiers to play with each of which can be set anywhere between 100 DPI and 16,000 DPI so because the GM41's DPI button can be found under the mouse and when you click the DPI button the RGB flashes are certain colors depending on which DPI setting you're on, which is kind of handy seeing that it doesn't really have a dedicated DPI light. So the mouse has a nice shape and size, almost feels like a mixture between the G Pro Wireless and with the long shape, you know what I mean? But it's not aggressive with the top hump and it has a mixture of the Viper Ultimate when looking on the front on design, which to me isn't a bad thing. Now, one thing to mention is that this mouse is made for right hand users only due to the fact that there's no buttons on the right side of the mouse. So in terms of how the grip feels on this mouse, not the actual grip, but how your finger or your palm grips around the mouse. I personally play a palm grip style and that's what I'm most comfortable playing with. I also have relatively large hands, but if you're a claw grip type of person, you should be completely fine here as well. Now with that being said, all the buttons on the GM421 are very tactile and responsive, which is very important in FPS games where reaction time is key. I haven't had any issues with the sensors on this mouse. MSI is using the Pixart PMW 3389 optical sensor and what that simply means is that this is perfect for keeping track of fast movements at 400 IPS so if you like to flick shot you're going to enjoy the motion on this mouse and even could go all the way up to 16,000 DPI which I mentioned before coupled with the one millisecond response time there's no excuse for missing those giga peaks like this <laughs> the mouse also glides so smoothly with the 100% PTFE feet. MSI said that they also use a Teflon mouse stickers for the feet as well and I have no complaints here using it for the past couple weeks and it's still gliding like day one. Now MSI plays some high quality Omron switches and they feel great. 
I also love the diamond pattern grips on the side. I tend to always find my fingers feeling slippery on my G Pro wireless, but this grip for sure helps with that issue. And the side buttons does have a bit of resistance so you don't accidentally press them by accident, which is key in games where you have like utilities. You don't want to be accidentally using up your utilities because that could cost you a game. So I like that from MSI. The scroll wheel is also on par with any other high quality gaming mouse I've tried. There's literally no difference between like the Viper or the G Pro wireless scroll wheel when I compare it with the clutch GM421. All right, so I'm no mouse guru or anything, and this is actually my first wired mouse. I just always thought that a wireless mouse just looks cleaner on the desk. So with that being said, for the first couple of days, I had to get used to the wire being in the way. It was annoying at first because the cord is just stiff, but I quickly got used to it. I should also probably get a mouse bungee because I heard it's more comfortable, but for now, I just push it through my monitor hole and yeah, it's doing good, but I definitely need a mouse bungee to have like freedom when I'm trying to swipe and not get the mouse like wire in the way. Now speaking about the wire, the cable is very long, coming at two meters in length, so plenty of room for activities. MSI calls it the friction free cable, which they made to minimize friction on the mouse pad or the desk. And it's true, I haven't seen the cord hitch or knot up when I was gaming, so with all that being said, how does the mouse perform in real world usage? Let's find out. So as you guys can see, the performance of this mouse was absolutely flawless in every test I threw at it. I couldn't throw the sensors off its path at all. That's really important as the last thing anyone wants when gaming is the mouse letting you down when you're placed in a clutch situation. Now the big question is, should you buy the MSI Clutch GM421? And my answer to this is if you're on a budget and you like lightweight mice without a honeycomb design. And yo, I'm being honest, the 65 grams is insanely lightweight. My G Pro Wireless Superlight comes in at 63 grams and that's one of the lightest mice I've ever like tried or used. So taking up the MSI G421 feels right at home. Also, the mouse doesn't even have to be your gaming mouse. You could get work done with it as well. And that's why I was also praising the design. It's very modern and sleek and I like it. They should probably make a white version though, so MSI, if you're watching this, please make a white version and also a wireless version to this mouse. That would be insane. So yeah, honestly, all in all guys, the Clutch GM421 has ticked all my boxes when looking for an ultra lightweight gaming mouse and for just under $55, you can't go wrong with buying this mouse and even if you only love wireless mice, it's also good to have a wired mouse in your arsenal it's made for clutch positions and if you're always in those clutch positions, you're gonna shine with this mouse. Links for this mouse will be down below in the description and let me know what you guys think. Will you be picking one up? Do you prefer wired or wireless? Do you prefer heavier mouse or lightweight mouse? As always guys, love, peace and tweaks. Signing out.